It's Steps from Steps Gaming, and today we got an iArcade project. We're going to be switching some buttons on the GRS iArcade Ultimate Control Deck. Yeah! Okay, so the, re so, so the reason I want to change these buttons is I like that click. I like that click a lot. I also prefer a convex button, although if they were concave buttons with the nice D44 micro switch, I wouldn't change the buttons. But these silent buttons... That, that they feel mushy to me. They don't give any feedback. I'm definitely not a fan. And, uh, you know, Glenn says it's a personal preference. Okay, cool. It's a personal preference. Otherwise, Glenn's deck is high quality. Love the trackball. It's amazing. Uh, love the spinners. It's great. So, uh, yeah, definitely a good purchase. But I, I, I did need to change the buttons. I'm going to do that today. All right, all right. So what I'm going to do is a test button here. I'm going to unplug these from this button. If it'll let me. <laughs> it's on there good. Alright. Well, let's see what I could do. Huh. Let's see if I could pull those off. Give me a second. Okay, I don't believe this is glued on. I think Brooklyn was wrong. It is just super, super tight, whoever did this. I just loosened it with the wrench, and uh, it's coming off. It's just really tight. So we can get that off. Yeah, it's not glued. It's not glued. It's just tight, super, super tight. Okay, All right. so it's not too much longer than that one, actually. I mean, obviously, the micro switch adds to it. But uh, that button, it's just that his control panel is so deep. The, the wood there, see how much space it takes. Quality product for sure. Um, so what I'm going to do is one button at a time. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that I know what cables go to what button. And if I do it one at a time, I'm not going to mix those up. It just makes my life easier than marketing them and dealing with stuff. So we're going to do one button at a time. And so what I'm going to do is take this black button and push it through. Connect the micro switch, connect the wires. And then I'm gonna put the deck back down and see if it fits so we can see if there's a test. Just to show you what I'm doing here, I push the, you know, I put the button down at the bottom and I'm gonna pull it up and then I'm going to put this ring on it basically and we're gonna attach it. So hold on while I do that. There's a better way. I'm gonna hold the button down with this hand and then I'm gonna use my other hand um, when I'm not holding a camera to screw that down. Okay, so the button's in here. And this is really tight. Like, it, it gets so tight. And I think a lot of it has to do with this felt material that's on the bottom of the deck. This deck is too much quality for its own good. <laughs> Again, there was no glue. It just really gets really tight. And I think part of it's because of that felt. So I'm going to attach. So I wish I had this a little bit more angle. But the problem is this is so tight now. And I don't want to mess with it anymore. So I'm going to put I'm gonna put the micro switch in. And I'm just going to angle these all the same way. And try to pay more attention going forward. I don't want to spend all night fiddle farting with one button, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so the key here is you find the lower button, the lower the lower um, hole to fit in there first. And obviously you want the metal prongs facing up if you're using a micro switch. And again, you will notice a difference if you get like a microwave micro switch or this D44X micro switch. Get the D44X Cherry Micro Switch. So now we are connected here. And now the question is going to be, will this still fit in the deck without having any problems? So let's turn around and see if it fits. So the answer is yes. Look at that. Flush. It's flush. Now granted, I have to put the screw in there. But it fits. And so you can see the button there. Same color. See that click? See, there's no click. It just goes down. There's no micro switch. That's got the micro switch. This button to me is so much better. Uh, of course, it's noisier on the stream, but I just like the gameplay better. And so we're going to change the rest of these out. We're going to get that wire connected to that micro switch too. Okay, so what we got to do here is take this wire and put it on um, this here. Well, guess what? Look at this. This is thinner. This is thinner than that. So we're gonna need to redo the cables. 
Ugh. <laughs> well, I think I got cables. This is really quite different. And I think it has to do with the fact that the iArcade all just connects here. Um, whereas the Arcade 1UP uses a uh, board that's on the deck. And so I could change all those cables. I can't change any cable here that I know of. And so these come out to here, right? And they fit on here. The problem I have is that this on these Cherry Micro switches are wider. So that's not going to fit. Now, granted, I could try to mod that. I don't know if I like that idea. Um, I tried to trace the cable actually, and it looks like this cable is actually connecting to this button. So, that, so this is really different way of hooking things up. This goes from this button to this button to this button, like like some sort of hopscotch or something. And um, yeah, I'm not sure this is interchangeable um, at all. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't. I I, I want a D44X micro switch for sure. I don't even know if I could cut that down. I don't know if we even have the tools, so I don't know. This may be a lost cause. Okay, see that black that's on the button? I mean, I got it off. This is still hot to the touch. It sucks. I have to heat it up with the hair dryer and then turn it with my hand and it kind of almost burns. And uh, then I get it out, see? And what I got to do is on those buttons, there's like a, like I move this up and then there's like a little tab I have to push on here in order to pull it out, which actually sucks. I almost wish it didn't have it because then I could just wiggle it off. Um, and then I can't turn anything. It's just like stuck there. That black, see, if I do this, like I can't, I can't turn. I have to heat up the thing and, uh, it's almost easier if I just take these off, which actually comes off really easily. All I got to do is like stick the screwdriver down in there and, um, you know, they pop off pretty easy. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to show you is you see that? That actually is an adapter I put on there that goes from 0 0.110 to 0.187 because these are designed for that smaller connector. And I realized I could have cut the wire and like made another wire, but I don't want to do that. And I didn't want to, there's a lot of different things I could have done, but I found these adapters for like a dollar a piece and they just convert, which is pretty easy, you know, cause like I said, it's smaller here. But to see, the thing is, these all daisy chain off of each other. Like, this this one's connected to this one down here. You can see this wire goes here. And it's like, they all daisy chain off each other. And then they go to this thing here that connects to the iArcade board. So I don't, you know, I'm not a fan of that. But I, that's an that's iArcade design flaw, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so the right side is done. I just tested it. It's working. I could show you in a video. Um, as I think I found out while I was trying to put these in the first time, and this is like a week later, is that these connectors here are point um, one one zero, and that they don't, they're not as wide. See, let me see. Yeah, see, there's that. So I can focus on that. There you go. See, they're not as wide as those so you say how did i get that to work well you could rewire the thing like you know snip the wire and then make you know add another cap or you know add more wire but instead i used this is a male connector that went into that female connector a 0 0.110 and then it goes to a 0.187 so i had to get 24 of those wires because there's two on each button all right um normally i would have these all facing the same way and that was really hard feat to accomplish because once you get this nut screwed down you can see it's really hard to get off because there's this nice felt underneath which makes it nearly impossible 
And now I looked at some of these and um, I'm not sure if there's blue or not because there's some places that are brighter where I felt like there could have been, but you know, I don't know. So I think what I've been doing, what I've been doing is actually I've been using a, um, a uh, hair dryer to uh, get this all warm. And I think what it does is it makes the plastic a looser and then I could get it off because this felt keeps this nut secured really good and it's really hard to get it to move. Plus these buttons are so close together. Like, look at how close they are. It's like ridiculous. Let me show you something. See on the Street Fighter deck, look, those buttons are not that close. So it's a lot easier to uh, change out these buttons, uh, that kind of thing. This this was a custom deck by Bobby. Um, Bobby Vu to die for. You can see it right there. But regardless, the deck would still be the same width because it's an arcade one-up custom deck. It's just a much nicer deck. So the buttons are farther apart, and they're supposed to be. Um, but on the IRK deck... You can't really do that, because look at all this stuff. We got a spinner here. We got our um, our controller, our joysticks, our spinners. Like, you got so much in this little itty-bitty bit of real estate that's crammed in. And the sacrifice here is it makes it really hard to get to these buttons, and these buttons are closer together. So the best thing I found is to just heat them up a little bit once I get the wire off and then get the button off and I'll show you doing that. And then we're, so I did test these buttons so I know we're good now. Okay, so there's a little clip right here when you push it together that if you hit it in the right spot, it'll come right off. Sometimes I've had a hard time getting that spot with my finger. So sometimes what I do is I put the screw the screwdriver down and I hit that little spot right there and then they pull right off. So I'm gonna do that. That's kind of hard to do when I'm on my phone. I could try it with one hand. I don't know if it's good. Hey, look at that. Look at that, see? Worked out pretty well. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do is take these off. If I can hit it in the right spot there. And it's kind of hard because I cut my fingers earlier on the IRK glass when I was trying to get that off to uh, remove the deck. I got a nice cut on my finger. It's hard to see now, but yeah. So I'll get that off and then I'll uh, show you what else to do. This like really small little flat screwdriver. I think it's like a zero or a one. I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to pop this part out of the button. Be careful. You don't want to scratch your deck. See, I popped it out there. And then what I'm going to do is there's a um, hole a plastic hole right in there and I'm going to spin this spin that button with uh with the screwdriver and try to loosen this sucker to get it out it's hard to do when I'm holding this with the phone but what I found it's harder to see that on this button because it's black and the deck's black but what I found is this is the best way to get this out a lot of times because or at least start to loosen it because it's really hard to get this loose to start and even still um sometimes you move this and it moves the whole nut but see it's loose enough now i can get it out but what i found is that uh it's just so tight because it's felt and so if you i just warm it up a little bit and then i find a way to get it out at all costs and i didn't even damage the button um, I, I could put the button back together if you really want to keep the button for whatever reason. I don't. I'm probably going to send these to, to die for to have as a present so you could put, do a mod on something or give it to somebody. But, uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do this with one hand. <laughs> it's funny. But, um, this could go right back in. It just snaps right back in. It doesn't. It does not affect anything at all if you really want to keep this button. You know, it just snaps right in. But you got to get the, the, the edges in the right spot. But it, it'll snap back in, trust me. Um, oh, yeah, here. Here we go. There's the hole. I got to snap that right back in there. See? Button's good. Put this back on. And now I can collect all these buttons I don't like and send them to Bobby. Um, I really don't like this button. I'm going to be quite, quite honest. Glenn told me it's a preference. I hate these buttons. Um, and this deck has been harder to work on than an arcade one-up. I'm not going to lie. 
Um, a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's just so... It, it, two things. One is it's a very high quality deck. And so much you got this felt here, which actually makes it more difficult. The buttons are closer together because he's trying to get so many things in this deck. So it's really unavoidable. I can't blame that on Glenn or Team GRS. Um, they did a really good job on the deck overall. It's just if you want to mod the buttons, it's more of a challenge because of the limited space and um, that kind of thing, you know, just is what it is. Okay, I'm unsure why I did the bottom middle button first, but that's just what I did. So I'm going to pop in my new HAP Competition Convex button right there, right? And so I go back over here, see what's going to happen is I'm going to have to get this nut on there. And again, this is hard to do with one hand, but see, when you tighten it down and you start to get really tight, it gets on that felt. So you're, once you get that all the way down, you're not going to be able to move this to get the angle you want. So you kind of want to be sure that it's in the right position for what you want, for where you want it to lie, right? So because this is going to determine that, otherwise you're going to end up like, like these over here. And luckily, because of these adapters, I've been able to just deal with it and make it work. So I don't have to undo all that. Because, again, this is hard to move without heating them up. Um, I'm going to... Uh, let's see. So this is going to go that way, which is perfectly fine. That's not going to be a problem. So I, wanna, I want this to end up like this, but I don't know. Sometimes it just doesn't turn out that way very well. And so what I have to do is move this around. You think, oh, well, that's simple. But the problem is when it starts to get too, like, really tight, the best thing to do to get that last bit of leverage or that last bit of tightness is to move the button itself. And so you don't, because otherwise it'll never get fully tight. So what I do is I go, you know, as far as I can and get it there. Still spinning, still spinning. And then to get it tighter, I got to move this button, right? So I got to hold this down and move this button. Or I could try spinning, holding the button with my finger while I spin it with my thumb or whatever I could do, you know? And I'm trying to get it as tight as possible. But at the same point, you know, you want the ideal placement for this, for this, for where the micro switch is going to need the connection, which is a, ch like I said, it's a challenge. See, now I'm holding the nut, but I'm spinning the button. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm spinning the button, the nut the wrong way. <laughs> so now I'm trying to hold it by pressing down here and spin here. Again, I got one hand. This is, this is you know, a challenge with one hand. But... <laughs> All right, give me a second. You know, you see what I'm doing and what I'm dealing with. You you will get how to do the button. Okay, so that's how it ended up. That's not too bad. I could deal with that. Um, what we're going to do now is there's a little bottom notch, and I'm going to line it up there. And then I'm going to push down over here and put that down. Micro switch goes into place. Then we're going to need our trusty adapters, which these are... Again, they're male 0 0.110 to female 0.187. And I got these at tmolding.com. I'll put a link to everything I bought in the description. The buttons, the micro switches, and these adapters. So let me get a couple of these out. All right. So we got two of those. And so that's the male end that's going to go on the original cables. And what I'm going to do here is, uh, oh, sorry, there's, there's, you know, my leg. I'm going to put these on here, if I can, with my limited hand here. I'm going to put these on the micro switch. I get the plastic off there so that I can actually connect it, right? And we're going to connect that in there, and we're going to push that down and then I got to do the bottom one which you want to you want to connect it to this top piece right here and this one right here this bottom one do not use you do not use this okay we're going to use this one here this top piece and then this one this this very bottom one no don't don't do not connect anything to it so we're going to 
connect that there. And then my adapters are connected, right? So now I got to find the, the original two wires here and connect them. The original, so here's one of them. And it doesn't matter which one you connect where. It should not matter, right? I think last time I connected the one that had two wires to um, the bottom one. So I will connect it to, to there. And then I'll connect the one wire to the top just to keep consistency, but I, it shouldn't matter. But I'm going to do that to keep consistency. And then you'll see, you know, that 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 will connect and it'll work. And I didn't have to do any modding to the, to the existing wires because I bought these adapters. Now, um, these do, these are a little bit different. Like on an arcade one up, I usually just pull all the wires and put all new wiring in. I can't do that here because this here. They, all the button, all the buttons connect right there, right? And all of these like daisy chain off of each other, and I, I don't want to mess with that. So what I'm doing is I'm doing one button at a time and not pulling all these wires out, because what I want to do is make sure that these wires go to this button, and then the next ones go to that button and that, and so forth and so on. So it's all the exact same. That means I have to do the least amount of calculations or work or tracing cables or figuring it out. Just do one button at a time, get it connected, then do the next one. That is my best advice for doing this. Okay, here you'll see. I got those adapters connected to the original wires. And you saw how I did that button. Now I got to do that for five more buttons to finish player two. And in the end, I should have both players now working. And that's it. Now you should know how to disconnect and connect this because that was part of putting the deck in in the first place. But if you don't know, I will show you when I connect this back up when I'm done. How about that? But uh, yeah, just do one button at a time, get all of them done. And like I said, as long as you do one at a time, you know you're using the right wires. And uh, it's just remember, it's this one and this one, not this bottom one here. And by bottom one, I mean the one closest to the nut. Okay, we got it in. All six buttons. Again, doesn't look the best, but... Because I have these adapters, I can get a lot of reach. This isn't interfering with the controller. So we're good there. Um, we got that side done. We're gonna plug it in. We're gonna see if everything works. Oh, okay, so what I normally do is I plug that USB cable for the hub in first, and then I slide this back. And then what I do basically is, you know, get that all underneath and slide the deck back into place. And then what I could do is screw that in, but I'm gonna test the buttons first and I'll put the glass back in, obviously. Okay, you'll see I plugged the deck back in. Now I'm totally unplugged from the wall. You do not want this plugged into the wall while you do this stuff. But yeah, I plugged it back in. Okay, so we're cutting on. I'm pretty confident this is gonna work. So I went ahead and screwed the deck back in and put the glass back on. Um, so, I didn't even just do testing. I normally, normally for most people, I recommend testing it before you screw everything in because it's just an extra step if it doesn't work. We're gonna let this load. What I usually use to test is Street Fighter because it's got six buttons and I got six buttons to test. It makes my life easier for testing. So I am scrolling all the way down to Street Fighter. Street Fighter. All right, cool. Here we go. Street Fighter. It's loading up. Let's go. Give myself some credits. Set the max. Nine. Okay. Player two. Yeah, there we go. All right. Ken, Ryu, doesn't matter. All right, so we're gonna test player two because I tested player one. There's your jab, medium punch, fierce punch, low kick, medium kick, roundhouse. Check that out. See? Why don't you see I am pressing the buttons here, right? And then we got Ryu, fierce punch, medium punch, jab, there you go. Medium kick. Roundhouse. We are perfect. All the buttons work. Sticks still work. Everything's working. We have a complete project. Look at that. Look at that. Hap comp 
convex with cherry micro fits in the cabinet works just need an adapter now i wanted to say i i did have to do some research to figure out how to get these buttons work because when i started doing the project i thought the 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 um cables were just gonna fit the micro switches but they obviously didn't so i reached out to bobby vu he told me to redo the wires i talked to glenn he told me to get some tool to reshape the wires or something i don't remember at this point but then it dawned on me, maybe there's an adapter I could get. And that's what I did because I thought it'd make the project easiest since I was limited on tools as well as I wouldn't have to damage any of the wires or anything like that or take any risks. Now it cost me a little bit more money because it was about 92 cents a wire times 24. But, you know, you live, so, you, you know, you're going to buy the tools, you're going to buy something. So it works. Um, it worked out for me pretty well. I had already bought the buttons thinking, hey, I'm good to go, but that wasn't the case. Would I do this project again? Well, I would now that I know how to do it because I didn't have anything to go off of. I had to figure it out. And now that I know, I made a video so other people could see it and see if they wanted to update to have controls, what they would have to do. And if you do it this way, it happens pretty quick. But let me tell you, I sat there frustrated for a while trying to figure out how I'm going to get these damn buttons out with such limited space. And I couldn't move the nut and, you know, all those things. It was hard to get a wrench in there. Like, it was, it was challenging. But now I know how to do it. I'm golden. Hopefully this helps you. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment down below if you are going to switch your buttons or you're just curious and watch the video or for what reason, you know. And I will see you in the next video here on Steps Gaming.